All right, hi everybody. Uh, Tom Luke here, back with Chess One Two Three. Uh, we are going to go over uh, our latest game um, that we played last week. Um, Luke, you want to give a little uh, intro into what we were doing? Yeah. So um, regarding our analysis method, we're if you're familiar with it, we're going through steps one through four. So that includes when we first started uh, during the game when we wrote down. Uh, critical moments for us. Uh, step two is when we went through our, our process of what was going on in our mind during playing. Step three was coming away with some lessons that we learned from our own thinking. And then finally, uh, defining all of the critical moments after we take a good close look at it. All right, so without further ado, uh, let's take a look at this game. Um, we started off, I played E4. That's pretty typical start for me as white. Luke responded with uh, e5. Uh, I bring my knight out to f3. Knight comes out. Um, and here's where I go into the scotch. Um, accepted there. Uh, and uh, this, is, this, this was the first kind of moment where um, I branch into a, just a I don't know, minor uncomfort. Um, I usually see the exchange happen there in most of my games where um, black ends up taking that night, but this isn't, this is still relatively common for me. So um, I did feel comfortable bringing my, bringing my knight right out. Um, uh, it's this next move here that uh, got me thinking. Uh, this was the first move that really got me going um, because usually when I'm playing the scotch, uh, at this point in time, if I see black bringing out a bit, bringing out his bishop, which is pretty pretty likely, um, I've seen it go to c5 probably more often um, than I see b4. Um, and this got me kind of going because this was now off of my um, uh, just automatic moves that I'm doing. Um, and uh, so I did take some time to find this one. Um, but I'm glad I did. And I think, it, you know, if you've watched our previous videos, using the clock was something that I was really struggling with. And this was a, a moment that I was like, okay, this is, this is a key moment for me. And I need to be able to not, you know, botch uh, my strategy um, by rushing into something. I had originally been looking at moves uh, uh, like bringing, I, I really wanted to bring that bishop, my white bishop out. Um, uh, but you know this is this is creating a pin with that knight, and now he's threatening to take, capture that pawn. Um, and I I kept thinking to myself, okay, well, can I bring the my my f bishop out to f uh, to to d three, protect that pawn? I'm going to lose that that knight. Um, uh, but if I do if I do lose that knight, then I can recapture the pawn. But now I've got I've got doubled pawns. Um, and then I, I had contemplated to like, well, maybe I should, I, I should bring my queen out or something, something like that. Um, but it was kind of a, after giving myself plenty of time to think about this move, and this is a 15-10 game. Um, and so we did have some time on the board. So uh, I, did, I did see this um, and I really liked that there because Capture's threatening to take the queen. So he's got to do something about it. And now, he gets the double pawns. I don't. Um, and what that what that does is it buys me that that time to bring out this bishop now. Uh, so now I'm no longer pinned. Um, and so that was cool. I I, I um, was happy to have learned my lesson from uh, our our previous experiences. Um, so he brings the queen out. Um, and this one here, again, uh, this, this probably took me more time to figure out. And um, in the end, this seemed like such an obvious move um, that, you know, I've got two attacks on, on the pawn here on e4. Um, but I think I, I, again, I have a tendency uh, historically to, um, uh, to really just be Hulk and smash. Um, and, uh, I, I think I really wanted to do something that was a little bit more aggressive than that. Um, but once I saw it, I was like, oh, you know, that it's a beautiful move. Um, so went with that. 
Uh, Luke brings his pawn forward. Um, at castle. Um, and he brings his bishop out here, uh, which I wasn't planning on. I move my queen over to uh, c1 to get it out of the way. Um, interesting. Uh, interestingly, after I did this move, one of them that I noticed was uh, bringing the uh, f-pawn forward um, to f3. And I actually notated that as uh, being my first critical moment there. Um, because I, I just kind of wanted to explore um, what would have happened had I brought had I brought that pawn forward. Um, I think it would have created a little bit of an interesting dynamic. Um, you know, I think in all likelihood, um, had I done that, we probably would have seen Luke backing his bishop up um, to keep the pressure on. That's that's my guess anyway. Um, yeah, I probably would have. Yep. Uh, but you know, that's, uh, I, I'm really usually planning on, on getting this F pawn engaged anyway. My king is castled. Um, and you know, I think maybe part of the reason why I wasn't thinking about it as a move is because like I mentioned earlier, I usually see that bishop on C5. Um, and that bishop isn't on, on C5. And so that, that actually made it into a possibility. Um, uh, but I, I moved my queen over, um, which I which really wasn't a bad move. I I did feel good about that. Um, and then and then the bishop came up, um, which was funny because I I'd seen that pawn move forward, and this negates it. Can't do the pawn move anymore. Um, that was uh, the reasoning. I <laughs> <laughs> uh, so I decide to. Uh, bring my rook out um get it so it's opposed to his queen um you know if we could get if we could get this um uh, if we could get this pawn out of the way right if that was just mysteriously gone then i'd be capturing his uh his oops i'd be capturing his queen because it'd be pinned to his king um not that uh i'm expecting that to happen but we've got some options so it, you know that's that's what Luke is really seeing. Uh, I'm sure when he's responding to it with uh, with Castle uh, breaks up that that potential pin. Uh, this one here, um, I so I'm I already mentioned that F pawn. I really wanted to push that F pawn forward, um, and so I was thinking to myself, I want to get this bishop out of the way. Um, and I see this move, and I think, okay, well, I can I can maybe get him to uh, move his bishop now. Um, I was actually really expecting to see Luke move to um, b6 here um, and keep the pressure on. Um, but I figured, you know, I want to move that f pawn forward. I can capture. I, that's that's what I was thinking at this point. If he moves his bishop to um, b6, I can capture. He's going to get to break up that doubled pawn, right? He gets his pawn structure back looking the way that he wanted. But now I get to move my f pawn forward. And so that was okay in my mind, good or bad. Uh, I haven't really looked into that analysis, but that's kind of what I, I had been thinking. Um, <clears throat> Luke uh, shocks the audience with this move here. Um, and as soon as I saw that, I, I, uh, I, I really was wondering what was up because <clears throat> um, I, I pushed my pawn forward. Um, and then after pushing my pawn forward, now he can't go to that b6 square. Um, and so he's forced back to the square that he was originally on. <clears throat> and you know I wanted to do that exchange in first place. Now I get to do the exchange and he doesn't get to um, uh, uh, fix his pawn structure. Um, so I was happy with that one. Uh, I take this opportunity now. I can push my pawn. I do it. Um, uh, Luke moves his knight. Um, I, and now I move my king over to um, h1. Uh, oh, and sorry, I did want to go back here because there was an oops. Feeling the end of the game. Just getting lost here. Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, 
I, there was a move here. Um, overlooked. There we go. Uh, one move that I, I just completely overlooked was uh, bishop to g5 here. Um, yeah. Would have been really That's beautiful. Nice. Yeah, um, because you know I've created a pin um, with his with his knight. Uh, I could spin to his queen, um, and I set myself up for pushing. Uh, oops, man, I'm just clicking all over the place uh, for pushing this uh, e pawn forward. Mm -hmm. That would have been so. Nice. Yeah, um, uh, you know I didn't actually write that down as one of my critical moves, but that probably uh, could have been. Um, so instead, we see this change here, right? Um, push the pawn forward, that moves. Um, I move my king to free up that f pawn with the intention of moving it forward. And um, this was a blunder that I missed until I did it, right? I, so I did the move, um, and I, I didn't. I didn't even think about the fact that um, the f two pawn is now left completely. At, uh, undefended. It's funny because that's in my, I mentioned this part a lot in, in mine. Yeah, I did this uh, after I moved. I remember in the game I moved and I'm like, okay, so I was, I was taking like, uh, 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 uh notes. I was recording my, my doing a voice recording while we were playing. Um, so I could kind of go back to this later. And at one point in time, I, I, after I move here, I'm like, oh, oh that's, yeah, I lost that undefended. <laughs> but does Luke take it? Because you know how aggressive <laughs> Luke is and all. <laughs> I mean, like, right. really? <laughs> uh, well, now, now I've got to do something about it, right? So now, now it's like, a great pawn. Now it's a great pawn. That was, uh, <laughs> yeah. Uh. So if I just plan on Luke missing, taking a free pawn, uh, that was a great move. Um, uh, <laughs> um, so he moves this pawn forward. Um, and uh, my first thought is, okay, I really, I want to, I want to push that pawn forward here. And this was like, this was kind of where we centered around as being this, it was a critical sequence of moves here for me. Um, and this is the really what I, I was looking at here. Um, so I wanted to push that forward, and then I do a, a count of um, you know the threats on this square, and I see I've got my rook defending, and that's it. And Luke has um, his bishop, and he's got his rook attacking that square. Uh, so I thought, okay, I need to get. Um, I need to get another piece into that mix, and um, uh, my my next thought was, okay, I if I move this um, if I move this uh, rook forward, then maybe I can bring a queen over and get that into the mix too, right? To be able to push that pawn forward, um, uh, and. So uh, then I look, and I, I can't move my rook to uh, e2 right now because, um, again, that, that same darn bishop uh, is threatening the square. And so I came up with beautiful move, right, uh, launching uh, the h pawn forward, h3. Um, and now he has to move the bishop. Well, of course, where is he going to move it? He's just going to back it up there. Um, you know, that doesn't take away this threat. Um, so me, in my head, I uh, don't know what I'm doing here. I, I, I move up there um, with, in, in my head, I'm kind of thinking, and I, I end up doing it. Um, I'm kind of thinking like, well, maybe, maybe I want to push this board um, to there. And I'm like, well, that'd be really risky. This is what's going through my head at this time. That'd be really risky to do that, but maybe, maybe I could do that, um, and I move my king there, thinking, okay, he doesn't have his dark squared bishop any anymore, so I'm going to move it onto a dark square, and my king should be relatively safe in that position. Well, here's what I wasn't thinking about. Oh, oh yeah, the turning point of the game that I'll bring up. Yep, 
I counted, I counted the number of pieces that were attacking this square, the square that I wanted to move to. What I, what I wasn't thinking about was the fact that what changed on this move? What changed on this move was there's now uh, an additional attacker on this square. Um, so now it's uh, one, two, three attackers. Um, so I just overlooked that. Um, and he takes. Um, and so, uh, yeah, this move here, that king move, was uh, the move, another critical move that I really wanted to go over in my analysis. Um, because yeah, the the what if um, uh, uh, really was. Um, let's see. Uh, oh, <laughs> this is what it was. So I talked about moving that bishop, right? I, I moved that bishop. And I had been thinking in my head, I got to make room on that square. Well, again, what changed? I already talked about that bishop being problematic for me. But it wasn't just problematic here. It was problematic in a bigger space. It was problematic there for me. That bishop had been threatening e6. But moving that, uh, that pawn forward made it so it was no longer threatening that, uh, that e6 square. And now, now was my, that would, that would my, have been brutal. <laughs> would have been brutal. That oh, was it. That could have been it. Yeah, that, that, that would have been such a solid move. Mm -hmm. And then you could follow it up by moving your f pawn as well. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, I, and I had done everything. I had done everything in this game up till this point in time to really prepare myself to do exactly that. I had, I, I was so focused on mm -hmm. my game plan, advancing that e font forward. And then, um, and then I let that happen because I just, I, I moved my king. I lost my tempo. And I, uh, here is, again, where um, this was me not learning from one of the things that I discussed in last game, um, and it was uh, uh, feeling flustered, okay? And so now I had talked about I was already planning on doing this move, right? I had already thought, oh my gosh, this is a risky move. Can I actually do this, right? Is this okay? Um, and right now, this is not... This is not game ending here. This is this is not a game ending position. Uh, um, I could recover from this, um, but I do this, and I've really, really just opened up my king here. Um, and I did this because I felt flustered. I had such a solid game plan up until this point. I blew that move, and instead of saying okay. And this is this is advice that I have learned um, reading reading um, previous books written by much better players than me. Um, somebody couldn't couldn't give you a reference um, has said, uh, "Don't let one bad move turn into two bad moves." Yes, and that's exactly what I did. I I had a bad move, um, but instead of saying, "Okay, recollect." Think about what you're doing. This isn't time to just throw caution into the wind. Um, I got flustered, and I said, "Okay, I'm I'm going with the the first risky plan that I saw." This happens. Now I I'm saying, "Okay, well, that's a pawn structure," <laughs> and now now Luke's attack begins, and I weakened the middle so much that. Now I'm just, I just start falling apart here. So now I'm playing defense. I'm just trying to get my pieces in some semblance of order. He's bringing that knight down. And now I'm seeing, oh, oh geez, like, I, I bring that out and I don't even see, oh, I've got a, I've got a fork coming here. Sure enough, fork happens. Now I'm losing a rook. This is what I'm saying in my, in my, uh, in my speaker, right? Am I recording? Oh, about to lose a rug. 
uh, uh, recapture, um, just just falling down, um, acting pieces, uh, doing the best I can to defend my king. I had the one plan of marching those pawns forward, and I was like, all right, well, I guess I've committed to this plan now. Charge ahead. <laughs> um, but, you know, his defenses are too strong. I'm not going to break through those three pawns, and I don't have sufficient material to really do anything. And then there was this move here, which was just, you know, this is, at, at this point in time, there are no real, really any there are no good moves for me left. Um, this is such a losing position, but this was uh, just an obvious blunder, uh, uh, and he took the queen. Um, at this point, I resigned. There was, there was no coming back from this position. Um, uh, but that's, that's where we ended. Um, honestly, uh, so I, I told Luke, too, um, this game, you know, it didn't end well for me, but there were a lot of key takeaways that I had from it, um, you know, that I, that I had taken from our uh, I, I, I felt like I had really learned from our previous analyses um, and, and the previous studies that we've done. You know, I had the time. I had, I had taken my time with my piece development more. Um, I, I, really have, I really have been focusing, too, on, you know, really focusing on an attack, um, a really solid attack strategy, uh, which, um, you know, apart from missing a couple of moves that would have been better, um, I, I did ultimately feel like I did a good job with. I was launching that pawn forward. Um, I did feel like I had a solid game plan. Um, that was that was really the move that uh, uh, threw me into peril. But again, taking my time, thinking about what I was doing, and um, trying to um, save from uh, recover from a position that is no longer necessarily advantageous to me. Um, and I think that's something that uh, uh, I definitely uh, can, can learn from. So I, I, I definitely look forward to diving into this game a heck of a lot more. I thought it was very interesting. So that was that was my uh, my takeaway. Go go ahead, Luke. That's awesome. Yeah. And you know what I love about this is because we're talking about it, um, you know, together. It's really like there are a few things you brought up. I'm like, wow, I didn't realize that was such a stupid move on my end. But now that I look at it and you said that I might actually change which, you know, three or so moves I'll use on our next video uh, after we do dive deeper. So um, really insightful. OK, so let's hop over to my side. And here we are. Let's so um, as we progress. Now, for me, uh, if you'll remember our last two games on this channel, I mentioned how in both cases I was really stressed when it, early on within like move two or three because I, I just I'm not very familiar with openings. So, uh, but this time I was like, okay, he's probably going to go with the Scotch game. Um, it's a solid placement, and so I think I'm ready. So I I as soon as I accepted it. And then this move right here was my first critical moment um, because I had, to, I had to make a decision which line we would start playing. And I, I did a little bit of study on the Scotch game and I came up with uh, Knight F6 because I think it diminishes the amount of options White has. And so um, I felt really good about this. At this point, I was pretty comfortable. So then we transpose into kind of a four knights game here. And, uh, as soon as we do this, I could not remember for the life of me which spot to place my bishop on, but I wanted, I felt like pinning the knight was, was a, you know, valid option. I, I was aware of the C5 that Tom mentioned, but I went with the, I went with the pin. So um, at this point, you know, again, I'm still pre feeling pretty, pretty solid here, which cannot be said of the last two games. I, I felt really flustered in the opening. So this is a big win for me where I was really, transitioning at this time to now unknown territory for for me was was really a big part of my thought process i'm like okay and now it's out of the book and now I, it's just me in my mind so he takes it makes me feel uncomfortable because i know i'm going to get double pawns but i did remember from studying the opening that you definitely want to take it with the b pawn so i do that if you take with the d pawn um then the queen can go up and capture that queen um, and uh, once that happens, the only way to recapture is to break up your castle. So, yeah, good point. 
So um, yeah, so after I took it with the B-pawn, um, then he obviously releases his knight from the pin. And uh, so I, at this point, I started to get a little bit, this is where I started to feel a little bit uncomfortable. I'm like, okay, I have doubled pawns. I know that that's definitely one of the lines in this system, but I am not exactly sure what to do here. I'm like, okay, I think I'm going, I think it's wise for me to get, you know, get my queen on the E file because at least then I'll get the pin on, on his king with the, with the pawn. So I go ahead and do that. Okay, now this right here, this was the first moment in the game that I had no idea what to do. Uh, I mean, I, I had already mentioned I now had entered unfamiliar territory. And for me, it, the next, the, the move, it's very much exemplified by how I responded to this. So now that I see that he's guarding that pawn again, and he's getting ready to castle, I decided, okay, this is where I was... I was already getting a little bit worried about my queen being on the file where his, his rook would be. So what did I do? I decided to put more pressure on the e4 pawn with mine. The problem is if I take it, guess what I have? I have two isolated doubled pawns, which is just no bueno. Uh, so that is something that made me stressed. And I also realized that, um, you know, he, he really has a lot more options than I do now that I kind of, I essentially took away possibilities for myself once I committed to, to advancing that pawn. So this is where my mindset began to get more and more and more scared of what he could do because of this whole e-file scenario and my queen being right on it. Okay, castles, I knew that was coming. And now at this point, you know, I'm just, I'm trying to get some sort of action plan going, getting my pieces developed, you know, focusing on those simple things. The problem here is my pieces aren't very well coordinated. And now it's very viable for him to advance the epon further, kicking my knight as soon as he gets the rook in there. And here's what was interesting. So this, again, I, I, it's kind of temporary thoughts here. I'm thinking, okay, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to get the queen off that square. So what does he do? Now he's got a battery that can now advance his bishop here, pinning my knight. So it didn't, so when I really looked back at it, I'm like, you know, that didn't really help me out. Like that was a temporary measure. And now what, you know, now after that, he could now advance here, you know, to, so, you know, at this you point. You know, one of the, sorry, Luke, one of the, one of yeah. the, why I did that move too is because my weak, my only weak pawn or my only weak piece at this point in time was the b2 pawn and moving my queen there also uh, provided it protection. Yeah, that's great thinking. Yeah, so I mean, again, as, as Tom mentioned, his, his, uh, his move choice uh, up to this point was very solid. Um, and mine, this move right here where I advanced my pawn to d5 was really the point of the game where I, um, th that haunted me for like the next six moves. I kid you not. That in combination with this whole file that was, that was opening up before my eyes was, uh, was the challenge for me to deal with. I let that get to me too much and I wasn't able to think as clearly because of it. Okay, so now this point, this is where my poor choice of here came to a, basically a climax. I'm like, okay, this is what I knew would happen. A, why have I not castled already? And B, well, I didn't address this. Like I knew it was coming, but now he's getting ready to do it. Take and what do we got going? It's exactly what I feared. So when I, I was afraid of it, I let my emotions get the best of me, but I also didn't like plan for it. So I'm like, okay, so then what should I do to, you know, to prevent myself from getting into that fix and I didn't so yeah this was uh this was the moment so this is one of the ones I'll definitely be looking at okay so now I castle it's a, a bit late at this point but um okay now he's attacking my bishop so even though he moves his knight all the way to the side which generally speaking isn't great it's definitely a good plan because I have to get my queen out of there 
Um, but now it's just, you know, he's getting all of these threats started so that um, it's just going to be a series of, of uh, exchanges. But it'll once when all is said and done, again, what, I'm, what I mentioned before, I'll be left with these isolated. And also, I, I just I really won't have a game plan. So I just again, his pieces are very well coordinated still. All right, so this one, <laughs> this is one of the ones, I actually didn't, you know, I, I know it looked stupid, but until you just pointed it out on yours, I didn't really see it much for myself. The reason for me doing this is I wanted him to advance this pawn, and I wanted to kind of, I, I know this is, this is gonna sound crazy, but I really, I was, what I was hoping for is for you to advance this pawn, and then advance this pawn, and then I could take it with this pawn which doesn't really make any sense because that's a few moves out and it's not going to happen probably, but that was my thought process. I was trying to force you to kind of try to gain some space on the, on the queen side all so that I can get my un pawns undoubled. But anyway, just weird, weird thoughts. Okay, so then I go there because again, I want to make sure this pawn does not advance. That's my concern right now. Okay, takes, takes. Whew. Okay, so my queen's out of that file now. So that's that makes me feel a little bit better. Uh, I know he could advance this pawn here in a moment if he wanted. But again, at this point, I still felt like, okay, well, yeah, he can move his bishop here, uh, hitting my queen. But I, I, I feel a little bit better now. Okay, he does it. I knew, I already, that was one thing I knew a while back. I was like, oh, if, if he advances his pawn, my knights go in there. Okay, this, <laughs> okay, this point right here, let's, let's jump a couple more moves and then we, I get my rook in the action. Uh, and then he, now, <laughs> this is the moment where I'm like, Luke, why did you not take that stupid pawn? <laughs> I, man, you guys, I mean, this, this, I didn't write this down, but I really should, like, I should change it. And I should write down as one of my lessons here, Luke, be like, take, seize the opportunity, man, seize the opportunity. I was thinking he had some ulterior, you know, some like a uh, secret plan and why he did that. And, and I was like, here is my thought process. Okay, so if my queen goes here, then, I mean, or sorry, let me go back, sorry, before. Okay, so now at this point, instead of moving my rook, if my queen goes here, then he's just gonna move his rook, which is now going on that file. But I, again, I was failing to realize that I still took a free pawn, and this pawn's probably gonna be gone soon because it's, you know, it's, helping out here so really is it that bad so that was the first I asked myself that question was it really dangerous to take that or not and I, I feel like at this point it's not like it was it was actually a valid option for me and I, I missed it and then the scariest part of this game happens and that's where he mentioned we get to this point where you know I now see there's two threats going there is this pawn advancing and then there's also this pawn advancing to kick my bishop. And my bishop is the second piece guarding that square. So that is, I knew this was coming. I'm like, if I can just somehow, if he misses this and I can somehow uh, uh, you know, attack his pawn, that would alleviate the whole threat that's at me right now. So then, of course, he does this. And I'm like, great, I know what he's going to do now. He's going to advance this pawn right here. <laughs> This was it. I'm like, my doom, my doom is here, man. This uh, is the level of players we are. <laughs> I know, I know. So, so he, so I moved my bishop there. I'm like, it's over, man. Like, it's I'm gonna be trying to trying to attack a you know a pawn on my sixth or seventh rank for the rest of this game. So he moves his king. Okay. So fortunately for me, you guys, two king in the last few moves, he had two king moves that gave me two different options. Now, the first time, I did not seize the opportunity. I did not take it with my queen. But the second time now, my last bit of hope here, I did seize the opportunity. And because I, so I learned from my previous time when I had an opportunity and I missed it with attacking the pawn with my queen, now I saw the opportunity and I finally did it. So I guess I learned from, from that. Okay, so now at this point, you know, it's it's really at, at the at the point where it's a desperate last ditch effort. So I'm like, okay, I I'm not worried about that. He advances it again. 
I'm like, it's only a matter of time before the pond storm will end. So I decide I'm gonna gain space. And my whole idea here was of all of these pieces, I mean, if you really look at all these pieces, there are no immediate threats on the board uh, against me right now by any piece, except for this one. So this one had a straight line to the king and you know that would you could call that a power move where it's it's forcing the initiative so that's the only one he had so by me i know that you could make the argument that that maybe this pawn duo is wise to keep for now but at the same time it's again at our level of play i'm thinking all right so if i advance it then i'm just eliminating the one threat so i did this right here okay so i this is where i learned something from our previous videos I was trying to think of what do I do? And I'm like, okay, let's go back to the fundamentals. What's my, what are my weakest pieces right now? Well, my bishop and knight are sitting in my second rank <laughs> doing nothing. So I'm like, okay, so fundamental principle, get your pieces into active squares. So that's exactly what I did with my knight. And lo and behold, because I followed those basic fundamental chess principles, now, all of a sudden, the, I took a long time with this move because I realized this threat here was now in my options because I had a double fork. Now, obviously, his bishop here could, you know, could remove my knight if I went there. But, but this fork, if he missed it, now that was a viable option for me. So I was trying to, at this point, think of what, what I could do after that. Or should I... Now, one thing um, I didn't, this wasn't in my in-game thoughts, Tom, but this was something I noticed after. I, I want to look at what would happen if I went here first. Um, yeah. So because if you look at the next, you know, after you moved here, so I knew that at this point you missed the, the fork with my knight. Uh, but I, I really wonder what would have happened if I went here first, because then, you know, after your king was checked, there's one of two things you could do. You could either move your bishop here or the king goes back. Uh, and so, I don't know, I, that, was, that, was, that was something that I was, I, now I know if your king went here, then that would eliminate the, the fork, but then there's a possible mating option. But the problem is after I did my calculation, I mean, I spent probably longer on this move than any other move of the game, um, interestingly enough. And because I was trying to calculate this, I'm like, what can I do? Now I didn't see this queen thing here, but I was trying to see like what could happen after here. So I was thinking about the queen, but only after I moved the, the knight. Uh, so anyway, very interesting. I, I, I wonder kind of how, if I fall down that road. Um, then, so I go for the fork and I'm still thinking if I should do something else instead. I'm still thinking, should I go down here? This is where I was thinking, should I move my queen, you know, and, and go, for the, go for the check? I don't know like is that advantageous for me it, you know then then we get treat pieces traded off faster so that was another thought process so i take it i do i play the simple simple route okay this move i didn't think very long and you'll see why here in a moment because as soon as i did that his king just waddles back to there and i'm like um why did i do this again because now his bishop can come here and it attacks my queen. And then, I mean, like they're just, and then I have this piece hanging still. So I'm like, why did I do this? Like, what was my game plan? So I retreated back here. Okay. So at this point I decide I need to have my rook guard the pawn twice. All right. And this next move, um, after I, okay. So I eliminate the, uh, the pawn storm threats. So that's, that's done. So I, I was kind of like a sigh of relief. I'm like, Oh, I don't have to think about that now. Now this move right here is actually something that the older Luke or the, the previous Luke, the younger chess Luke would probably not have done because this is one of those spots where I just didn't know what to do. I'm, I wasn't sure how to, what's the best way to get my pieces active. Um, I saw two options. I could either advance this pawn like I did, or I could go and attack the rook. Now, probably, especially because this pawn, it's not that great anyway. It, I, I probably should have gone after the pawn with my queen instead. Uh, that would have probably just been a much more solid option for me. Um, but either way, the old Luke would have probably done something with his rook or like move this 
bishop here or something pointless. And so I was at least proud of myself for thinking like, okay, let's go for a queen side um, space now. Let's, let's, let's kind of throw something else at him uh, now that I have a positional advantage. And, you know, well, that happened. But yeah, so I think, I don't know, do you, Tom, did you want to go through your, uh, what, what your lessons were that you, that you took from this? Yeah, I mean, so the, the lessons were, um, it's funny that you talk about uh, that, you know, the, the, the focus is on how we're feeling, right? Um, as mm -hmm. rotating. Um, one was, it was a feeling of being flustered uh, because the, the, that, that was really what it was. Once my, once my pawn was captured, I don't know what move it was, somewhere around here. Uh, once that pawn was captured, I really felt flustered, and I allowed that to um, throw off the rest of the game. Because um, honestly, and um, this was uh, uh, to be fair, I did uh, I did peek at this one. Um, oh yeah, I, I was just thinking that just like two seconds ago when you mentioned it. Yeah, you know, I, I mean, even doing something like that, uh, I get back on the, I get back on the attack. That is an undefended piece right there, right? Um, now, if he's if he's moving it, right, um, or even if I end up if he defends and I take it, something like that, I can I can recapture that pawn, and then my game plan is actually back on, advance mm -hmm. that. Pawn. Game certainly was not over for me at this point in time, um, but I treated it as if it was because I felt flustered. Um, so I think just one one of one of my key takeaways was um, if you're feeling flustered, that is a moment for reflection. That is a moment to calm down and think about what you're doing before you proceed, because you have to proceed with extra caution because your game plan was just thrown off. And I, mm -hmm game plan get back on get back on track um and that you know i i could have i could have possibly uh, uh seen that in the game if i had if i had taken that time to uh, to do that um so one that that was one um uh the the other ones happened through The, and this is this is one that I, I do want to explore because you know I had set myself up for this um, this uh, kingside attack um, with those pieces lined up so well there. Um, I but then I ended up doing this move, which again wasn't bad. It wasn't a bad move. Um, but I don't think it really was optimized to the way that I had my pieces positioned on the board. Um, yeah. I do think that one of my tendencies that I have is I get, I get a game plan um, in my head. You know, my game plan in my head this game was move the F pawn forward, right? That was my game plan. And it was like anything that happened on the board, it didn't matter how Luke was responding, my game plan, I was inflexible in it and I needed to do everything that I could to move that F pawn forward. Not really thinking about the fact that, you know, this is, this is now a really powerful attack that I have. So maybe I should say, you know what, now is not the time for an F pawn um, to be moving. Um, I've got, I've, I've set myself up really well um, you know, based on his previous move, the bishop move, which forced me over here, now, now this has opened up a new line of attack for me that would be much better. Um, and another one, too, that um, played out in this game that uh, I, I've noticed through many of my um, uh, games that I've been playing uh, has just been... Um, struggle with identifying um, uh, pawn moves. Um, I just hit something. Uh, identifying pawn moves. Um, the pawns are effective tools in the game. 
and I have both a tendency to overlook them in their attack capability or counterattack capability. Um, I often I often will fail to recognize an appropriate time for a good pawn move, um, but simultaneously um, doing something like this here um, is also something that you know I I will do on a whim, which is just neglecting to you that to use the pawns for the defense, especially around my king. Um, I, so those, uh, I would say, I would say um, utilizing, utilizing pawns, um, being flexible in my, in my attack plans, um, uh, and then not getting, and then not throwing the game when feeling flustered. Nice. Yeah, so for mine, um, let's go back to, so I mentioned that when it came to, this point, I, because I was in unknown territory, I didn't give myself enough time to just think through the implications. Because when I moved this pawn, I, if I just remembered the basics, okay, now that I move that pawn, he can advance this one, right? So now there's no one stopping him from advancing it to kick my knight. So, you know, I, I'm going to be looking at this one in more detail, but uh, the 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 idea of mental transition after opening knowledge for me, this is it right here. When I have a, a transition in my mindset from book openings to now I'm on my own and it's all you know strategy tactics and just my wit, that's where I need to really just take a step back and say, okay, what are the implications of this move? And this this is what ended up causing my downfall in the in the beginning as we started to enter the mid game here and a lot of the challenges okay and my second one is also kind of related to that the whole time that i saw that that file getting ready to be opened um even up to this point i still never addressed this issue that was coming soon so my takeaway from this was that i need to really think through when it's wise to open a file and when it's not wise. Uh, so if I'm, if I'm concerned about it opening and my queen being there and king, uh, I should establish a game plan, a, you know, a, just a basic game plan of what I'm going to do to, you know, to address that. And the problem here in this game is I, I didn't ever, I didn't ever really address it. And so because of that, it just, the pressure grew and grew and grew and grew until we get to this point when now it, it happened, but I never really thought through how I would prevent that. And it all came back from this pawn advancing. So yeah, when, when I should open up a file and when I shouldn't. Number three is uh, when we take it to right, um, right here. Uh, the fact that I probably should have taken this with my queen, and as Tom mentioned, that was a, a mistake on his end to go there. He missed this being uh, a hanging pawn. So right here, I need to assess if an option to capitalize on a weakness is wise. I knew this was a weakness, so it's not that I didn't know that this was something I could do. I was just scared of having the rook you know, chase my queen away as soon as I captured it. But weighing the you know weighing which you know the benefit and the and the disadvantage i mean it, you just have to do that that's part of chess it's it's we're not in a vacuum and so i i just need to really you know assess if an option to capitalize on a weakness is wise and i if i just took some more time to assess that i would have taken it i would have i would have probably i would have most certainly taken it uh and then my last one is uh getting minor pieces onto active squares as exemplified by you know, when it's when his attack started to fall apart after the blunder, and then we get to this point, um, this was actually a good thing that because I followed those principles of getting my what can I do productive, I can get one of my minor pieces to an active square. And uh, that ironically, it should have but it wasn't my intention when I advanced this pawn. So uh, that was be now all of a sudden now, 
Tom, this is the first time in all of our three games so far, I actually found a tactic, you know, like a clear, like, here's a fort, like, you know, we do those in chess puzzles, but you rarely encounter them, you know, in our level, because it's hard to see. Um, and, but again, I didn't, I can't say that I was as cool as actually seeing it two moves, which I should have. But I can say that because I followed a basic principle, aha, now it opened it up for me. And even though, you know, even though Tom could have seen that, you know, and, and he didn't, the, this, the fact remains, this was a wise move. Uh, so again, mental transition after opening knowledge, I just need to take a breather and step back at those moments. Uh, number two, I'm, when I'm unsure of when to open a file, I need to really look at my options and come up with a game plan. Number three, ass assessing if an option to capitalize on something is, is wise or not. And then finally, getting minor pieces on active squares is, is crucial, especially when you have a, a positional advantage like I did. So. Well, cool. Um, that's what we've got for this game. And then uh, uh, next week, we'll be uh, putting a video out uh, uh, going into a detailed analysis um, of this game, uh, more than what we've done already. Yeah, and I would have to say, I just, in conclusion, I have to say that I think, Tom, you definitely, your game has really started to improve a lot. Like, since, you know, even since our last two games, the whole, I mean, yeah, you made those two blunders, but mm -hmm. take those two blunders away up to, before that point, you had a really solid game plan and your pieces were well coordinated. You, you know, you didn't, I, I just, I, I'm, I was really impressed. So that's, that's kudos to your okay. work. Um, as Susan Polgar said, uh, every, every win is, uh, is a, what did she say? It's like a proof of our hard work or something like that. That's totally it. Um, every loss is a learning opportunity. Every, every loss is a learning opportunity. And for me, I had, you know, I had one, a couple decent things that I, I had learned as exemplified here, but, um, all in all, I just need to be more careful with which each of my moves and make the pieces more coordinated. So, you know, I think, you know, a general takeaway to just, um, for anybody to think about as they're playing games. Um, obviously, this was a game I threw away. Um, I, but the joy of it, uh, the, the joy that I get out of this game, right? Um, it, it, was in, it was in those moments before. It was, it was I, I, felt, I felt solid about my gameplay before. And, and with that, I felt good. I, I, I mean, I have something to hold on to, and I can see the progress that's being made. Um, uh, and that, that is something that's um, a little bit more tangible. Um, yeah. Yeah, and it gives, you, it gives you a good takeaway, and it, it gives you something to, uh, to, to, you know, aspire to. And I'm definitely getting better at, at really understanding my own thought processes. That's something this game was just far better for me than the other two games. I was, I really was able to get in my own head a lot more. Yeah. Um, and, well, and, and, and recording, doing a voice recording. I yeah. I ended up doing that loop. Yeah. Yeah, we both did that, guys. We, we both really recorded our voice. Really worked out well. Mm -hmm. Just, I talked through all my thoughts. Um, and interestingly enough, so we, we, uh, a uh, half an hour before uh, we were going to get on to make this video, I got on to pull up my notes that I had typed up immediately after the game, and I deleted them. I didn't save them, and I was like, oh, no, oh, no, I need them. Uh, but it was so cool because I had the voice recording that I had done while I was playing the game. So yeah. I just went back, and I, I listened to the voice recording, retyped my notes, and now I'm back in my head. I'm like, oh, that's exactly what I was thinking, which – Actually, interestingly enough, Luke, I would challenge you to listen, re-listen to your um, voice recording. Oh, I did. I did. Yeah. Did you? It was because great. I thought it was really interesting listening mm -hmm. to it now because now I'm not, I'm, I'm a week wiser now. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, totally. <laughs> and I listen and, and listening to some of my thought processes and, you know, having dived into this game and already looked back at even, even having, you know, taken a break a few days uh, before coming back and re-listening to that voice recording, um, mm -hmm. those lessons that I had already started picking up on, I had taken away. And so as I'm listening to my voice recording, I'm like, why am I thinking that? that I, I could do that. That move is obvious to me now. Mm -hmm. so, yeah. It was really, really cool just to see that process unfold. Yeah. And I played a, I played four blitz games, like 10 minute blitz games last night. And, uh, this is the last thing I'll say, but I, um, 
I, you know, I just did a quick analysis of the chess engine and I got like a B plus or an A on all four of them. And I won on all four of them. And I had the advantage the whole time. And I was very careful. Basically everything that I didn't do right in this game, I did in those. And so that was exciting for me because that was tangible. I was really trying to implement the things that, you know, that I learned from this one. And it's, man, there's nothing more exciting than when you start to see your progress and you know that it's because you were focused, what you were focusing on in improving, you're actually implementing. That's, it's exciting. So, all right. Any, anything else you want to, yeah. Well, thanks so much guys. Um, and uh, yeah, continue to improve your game. We look forward to seeing you next week when we, uh, when we go in deeper with this one. Bye guys. Bye.